last session we have discussed about about uh, security topic right like internally what type of uh, attacks are available how to prevent from that from outside like what type of uh, attacks are available then how to control that like uh, passwords encryption configuring a uh, exact time out when the session is not in use like creating some uh, warning messages warning uh, creating banners and we encrypt all type of passwords we have and even uh, uh, login purpose remote login purpose we use uh, ssh generally we use telnet but telnet is not secure so why because telnet will send the data in a clear text so instead of uh, telnet we use what ssh right okay so today let me continue with one more topic scenario is here to provide to secure first switch yesterday we had discussed the security for router right so today we will continue with the switch security so switch port number 1 port number 2 3 like number of port 24 ports so user 1 connected to pc 1 now user 2 user 3 like user 4 number of devices connected so let's consider pc1 and pc2 first device are in vlan 10 so let's consider pc 456 uh, 345 in a vlan 20 okay now the basic example is from uh, isp ISP to router, router to port number six. Here, cable is connected. So VLAN ten are junior administrator, and VLAN twenty is a senior administrator. Now, because my requirement is a, I need to uh, provide the internet access only for VLAN twenty, the senior administrator. And what we need to do? I created one VLAN, VLAN twenty. Name is senior administrators, and which port numbers are being the part of VLAN twenty? Port number three is a part of VLAN twenty. Port number four, port number five, and the very your ISP router cable. The port is connected. Port number six also is a part of what VLAN twenty. Now three, four, five. Port number three, four, five ports only can get internet access. So there are no. Internet for port number one and port number two. Why? Because one and two are in the different VLAN. Okay. So, but my requirement is here: how VLAN ten users can access VLAN twenty? How junior administrators can uh, get internet access? So, what are the chances we have here? Any answers, guys? Let me repeat my question. Now, three, four, five, six ports are VLAN twenty. So, port number six we have connected internet, right? Now, junior administrators in a VLAN ten, port number one and port number two. So, what are the possibilities are there? VLAN ten users can communicate with VLAN twenty. Like, what are the possibilities are there? Junior administrators can get internet access. Any solutions? VLAN ten, VLAN twenty. Okay. Inter VLAN routing. Sorry. Okay. Right. Good. I V R. So once we configure inter VLAN routing between the VLAN ten, VLAN twenty, then VLAN twenty users, VLAN twenty users can communicate, right? So this inter VLAN routing we can do in the three methods. By using router multiple physical interfaces, or by using router only one physical interface by creating multiple sub interfaces, or if the switch is a layer three switch and directly can configure, all the methods, right? Okay, very good. First one is a inter VLAN now. Any other possibilities? Of 
question is okay. We land uh, inter will land outing IVR. Any other possibilities is there? If I create a VLAN 10, name is a junior administrator and port number 1, port number 2, port number 6, I created one VLAN. Now junior administrators can get internet. So what I'm doing is, I'm shifting, I'm moving port number 6 into VLAN 10. Now junior administrators can get internet, right? Yes, they can get, but no internet for senior administrator, right? But this time I'm asking is what? What are the possibilities are there? Any other possibilities? We'll do one thing. If I change VLAN, uh, uh, Gene Administrators, VLAN ID is a VLAN 20. Now, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Like all put the part of what? VLAN uh, 20, right? So they can access. So next option is, next solution is a changing VLAN. Any other solutions? Okay. Now, solution number without VLAN, all ports use internet. Okay, good. Remove VLANs. No VLAN 10, no VLAN 20. No VLAN 10, no VLAN 20. If we remove all VLANs, like all users can get internet access, right? Okay, is also one of the solutions. Thing is here, junior administrators to get internet. What are the chances? Is they they want to do inter VLAN routing, or they have to change the VLAN, or they have to remove the VLAN? Right? These are the possibilities. So for junior administrators, we can access only switch user mode. Right? So junior administrators can have a privilege to log into switch privilege mode. No, between you have what password is there? Where you can configure I have inter VLAN routing. The user mode, can you configure inter VLAN routing? No. In user mode, can you change the VLANs? No. In user mode, can you remove the VLAN? No. So there is no chance technically for junior administrators to access internet. Right? So do you have the security or not now? There is no chance for junior administrators to access internet, right? So means your internet is secure or not? So internet is my example. You can have any uh, any uh, resources. Let's say port number six, some server is connected. Port number six here, one server is connected. Now how junior administrators can access server? So there is no chance. So junior administrators to access server, they have to configure inter VLAN routing or changing VLANs or removing VLAN. So is all the configuration is not possible for junior administrators. Why? Because they are in what? User mode, switch user mode. So now tell me guys, now your server is a secure or not? What exactly the real time? One more vulnerability is there. What junior administrator is doing is they try to configure inter VLAN routing is not possible. They are trying to configure uh, changing VLANs is not possible. Removing VLANs is not possible. Then you know what exactly junior administrator is doing is so they just uh, remove the cable from port number two. They remove the cable port port number three. 
but just connected the cable for port number two. Now this user computer is a part of VLAN 10 or VLAN 20. So this piece is a belongs to which VLAN guys? VLAN 20. So once the cable is connected, then now this user can access which one? They can access server. Very simple, right? So this user now no need to configure inter VLAN routing, no need to configure changing VLANs, removing VLANs, passwords, nothing. No required even a passwords also. So just physically they have removed and cable in such port number three. Access. So, but we have configured VLANs and we are thinking is what? Yeah, my network is secure. But we have one more possibility is what? So, physically they can remove and inside the cable, yes, they can access. So, do you think we have the security for your ports here? No. So, when unknown user is being connected, your port number three should not access. So for that, we need to provide security. We need to configure security for your phone. So to configure the security for your ports, we have concept is what guys? Ports security. Port security. So, how to provide security for your router? A switch ports mean. Example is my port number one, port number two, port number three, four. So, first device coming to port number one, second user device, third user three, third user four. So each and every device we have a unique MAC address, right? Computer one MAC address. First PC MAC address is A1. And computer two is A B1. Is C1. It's uh, A2. B2. It's a C2 computer. So let's consider my computer is a PC5. Port number five, my PC is connected. Port number four, uh, port number five, like which computer is connected? My PC. My PC marker, this is what? B2, right? So, what exactly I am doing is interface FP, fast Ethernet, zero slash port number five. Hello, port number five. My computer MAC address is B2. I am dealing to port number five. Hello, port number 5. My PC MAC address is what? B2. So, I am going to binding my MAC address to port number 5. MAC binding. Now, port number 5, known MAC address is only B2. Okay, now, port number 5, B2 MAC address has been binded. So, what port number 5 is doing is now, whenever traffic is coming from B2 computer, now port number 5 will say, okay, you are coming from B2. Yeah, you are known. I know your MAC address. You are known MAC address and forward traffic. Like after some time, some unknown device has been connected here. It's trying to connect. Like PC3, junior administrator is connected to port number 5, the cable. So actually, so PC3 MAC address is what now? C1. So source MAC address is C1. 
destination MAC address is some uh, uh, broadcast MAC address, whatever. Your traffic is being generated. The traffic is coming from which MAC address? Source MAC address C1, right? The what port number four, port number five is below is a. Your traffic is coming from C1. Sorry, I don't know. So, who are you belong? I know only below B2 MAC address, but your unknown MAC address, I don't know your MAC address. Don't allow. The traffic is being dropped. So, port number five, port number five allows only B2 computer traffic only. If any other device are connected, if any other unknown MAC address has been connected, also drop your traffic. Your traffic is being Security based upon MAC address based on number of MAC address published. We have removed the cable and your B2 PC is connected. Now, what port number 5 will do? Yes, your known MAC address will forward the traffic. But my requirement is a not only B2 computer, I want to allow C2 also to access my port number 5. Like I, I want to allow A2 also to access my port number 5. What I'm doing is so for one interface, we can bind multiple MAC address. So, B2 is my computer. And A2 and uh, C2, these all maps have been binded. How many maps are binded now? C MAC address. But up to how many maps we can bind from one MAC address to 132 MAC addresses we can bind for one physical interface. Okay, for one interface we can configure one thirty up to 132 MAC addresses. The point clearly showing here. Port security for user. What is the use of port security? Used to control network access based on what? Based on MAC address, based on number of MAC address for port. So, how this go into security? What is the security actions are available here? So, we have three types of uh, security actions, violations that is, we can make your port is a shutdown when unknown users are trying to access. We can control another traffic by restricting the mode. And we can protect our port also. So, three violations shut down, restrict, and protect. Let me discuss clearly one by one. So, how protect is going to working and how restrict is going to working on and how the function of uh, shutdown commands all of it. So, violation modes. Example now have binded only one MAC address, which is B2. So, now B2 is only binded. So violation is how configured protect. Port number five is under what is the security action protect, right? So your port number five. Your port number five LED status is green, it's blinking. When if V2 is connected, also green. If C1 is also connected to green, like any users connected, there is no changes in your LED status. So after unknown devices connected, no changes in LED is keep blinking green color, but internally is going to drop your top. Even A1 is connected, no change in LED, like internally dropping the top. So this is a action of protect. So protect is doing is what? Unknown source MAC address traffic is being dropped. No changes in LED. Next one. Next 
one is a restrict. Restrict, what does it will do? Same like a product. Restrict means unknown device is connected. If unknown device is connected, no changes in LED, internal traffic will be dropped. Similarly, protect. Then what is the difference between protect and restrict means? If it's a protect, like which user is trying to access, which MACR is trying to access, we don't know. C1 is connected or A1 is connected or B1 is connected, A2 is connected. So when A2 is connected, when B1 is connected, at what time or how many times he entered, like we don't have, we don't know anything information. So just your port number five is going to drop the traffic. That's it. But in case of restrict, what restrict is doing is no changes in LED, but traffic is being dropped. At the same time, it will generate the log message, which send the information. Like so on, so on A1 computer is uh, three times and four times he's been trying to report number five at what date at what time is all log messages will be generated notification will be generated protect no logs this unknown uh, source mac address traffic is been dropped no notification messages restrict same thing unknown source mac address traffic is been dropped but to generate the log message the one more is a shutdown If you enable shutdown, like when unknown device has been connected, your port LED turns off. In the case of protect and restrict, your port LED no changes in that, right? Shutdown, your port turn, turns become what? Down. The action page. Shutdown, port becomes error disabled, port LED turns off, protect. Frames with unknown source MAC address are dropped. Restrict. Frames with unknown source MAC address are dropped, but thing is what? It gives a notification. In case of product, product, it does not notify. Okay. You can copy. The configuration part. For example, this port number we have discussed here, port number 5. Which MAC address? B2 MAC. 
An action can be can configure anyone either protect or restrict or shut down whatever. The configuration. In switch configuration mode, interface. Path is any slash port number five. Switch port mode access. Uh, to configure port security, your port should be access port. For access ports only, we can configure, we can enable port security. If the trunk port, if any other modes, we cannot provide the port security. So make sure that before you are going to secure your port security, then enable access port, port security maximum. How many macros can bind the maximum? We can bind now, it, it can support up to 132, but the value is how many max you want to bind. Like how many macros you are going to bind. You are going to binding a 5 MAC addresses and your value is 5. You are going to bind is a 1 MAC address and your maximum is 1. So, in our example, uh, my PC MAC address is B2, only 1 MAC address, right? Then Switch port, port security, maximum is a 1. Value is 1. Switch port, port security, MAC address. MAC address is B2. Switch port, port security violation can go for protect or restrict or shut down. So finally, to enable port security, switch port, port security is a command. So to remove port security, you can use commands what? No switch port, port security. With the practical Switch okay, device one and device two. Put number one, put number two, and put number three. Computer IP address one nine two one six three eight dot one dot ten. Second computer IP address is one nine two one six eight one dot twenty. One nine two one six eight one dot thirty. From first computer, let me check the communication. From first computer to second computer, one nine two one eight one dot twenty, getting reply. 
Indian computers currently which port number? Which port number, guys? Port number two. Right. Let me secure for port number two. Interface. Pass Ethernet zero flash port number two. Switchboard mode access. Switchboard. Port security. MAC address. Let me check my computer MAC address. Code number two MAC address is this, 007. I am going to copy this MAC address. Port, port security MAC address, computer MAC address is being clicked. Enter. So clearly showing the message what port security not enabled on interface pass Ethernet port number two, right? Enter the command is what switch port. Security. Command has been accepted. Switch port port security violation so which violation we can take place we have a three right so violations are three violations you can uh, go for protect restrict or shut down shut down enable what shut down Now port number two, as long as uh, this PC is connected, communication has been enabled. After some time, my cable is being removed by someone. What that person is doing is, so he is connected to port number two with other device. This unknown device is connected to port number two. Then what happened to port number two? So it present is shut down now. Why? Why when it is not shut down? Now unknown device is connected, right? But still is not given the shutdown. See, showing the green color only, right? It's not really down, right? You know why? Why? Because so by connecting the PC, your port will not down. So that PC if is trying to access anything. When traffic is being generated from the PC, then only traffic port is going to down, right? If just the PC is connected means there is no traffic is being gen generated. So once any traffic is being started, let me do some. Uh, uh, let me generate some ping on some ping messages. So you people consent to the port LED port number two LED. Ping fast PC one dot ten. Have you seen? No communication. Your port is in a red color, right? Is a down. Indicates what? Shut down. Right. Now, after some time, I have removed the cable. And my actual PC has been connected. Now, can you access from PC to my original PC is connected? Now, can you have a communication from the PC to 
employee. The port is already shut down, right? Then how we can access? Even your known device, your original PC is connected, also no communication, no access. Then when exactly can you communicate this port number two? So log into switch. the command shutdown and no shutdown right until unless no command we have one good concept like we have one good option in cisco uh, in species you know what is that so we can recover the times so when no device is connected so if no device connected within 20 seconds your port automatically should be up Within 30 seconds, your port becomes active. Within 40 seconds, the timings we can configure. The timings we can set in. But actually, the problem is what here, even your known device is correct. Also, we are not able to access, right? You know why? Why? Because your port is going to become to it is to IP interface uh, brief commands. So interface pass Ethernet zero slash two port number two pass Ethernet zero slash two is down line protocol is down. What is the status of port number two, guys? Now port number two state is a error disabled state. Your port is in a not shut down. So your port is not completely down. You are not poor. Your port is not completely active, right? Is error disabled state. So from this state we can recover it. To recall error disabled state, we can configure like this. The option is what? Error disabled recovery cause is a port security and error disabled recovery interval seconds. A number of seconds can configure here. Okay, guys, can copy. Let me check the uh, option will support or not for this package system. software. No, the packet is software is not supporting. You are, we say have a original, like a hardware uh, physical switches, then you can enable. Command.
All right. So these are about uh, switch port security. Back binding. The port security to control the network access based upon the MAC address and based on number of MAC address or like up to 132 MAC address we can find. Back to our routing uh, uh, topology, which we discussed clearly now, uh, what is the connectivity between R1 and R2? The two branches. Branch of is one, branch two. How exactly branch one, branch two is connected? Have the two axes, two ways. One is, uh, the first one is via internet. Broadband service. One more is a lease line, lease line service. So, which is the best broadband service or lease line? Lease line. Why? Like compared to broadband, lease line is a secure. Do you remember in the van technologies we have discussed? So, type of technology is a lease line technology, no downtime. Fixed bandwidth, no other traffic is been connected. So compared to internet, it is a secure, right? Okay. But compared to inter broadband, laser lines are high expensive. Laser lines are what? High expensive. So now all the companies, what the companies is doing is, no, we, we don't need the lease lines. If we go into the lease line, we need to maintain, we need to pay like more amount, right? So what the companies are doing is, they're taking the broadband connection actually with a very high speed. If you take the broadband connection, they have the security now. No secure. Let's see how they're connected here. Now branch office one is connected to Local service provider ISP. Even your branch of S2 is connected to local service provider. So all service providers are connected to internet. So this is actual connectivity, right? Branch one and branch two. Land, land using. Okay. Now to enable communication between land one and land two, like branch one and branch two, what we need to configure? Now branch office one uses and branch office two want to communicate. What will do then? Enable routing between. Enable routing between branch office one and branch office, right? Branch office one, branch office two. Now you can configure any routing. It can be RIP or OSPF, right? Let me example. I have configured OSPF in branch one. In branch one, I have configured OSPF here. Like after enable routing part, now branch one and branch two can communicate, guys. They communicate or not? Hmm. 
So first, let me take really example between branch one and branch two. How the OESP has been working? Do you remember OESP of seven states? So OESP of seven, state one is what? Initial state, downstate initial state, two way, extra exchange, loading, full set, right? So OESP of directly will send the database to router? No. What router uh, OESP will do? So first we'll exchange what? Hello pack. So means now branch office one sending hello packet to branch office two router or ISP router. So branch one router is sending hello packet to which router? ISP router, right? Now maybe ISP router is running the OSP for me not, right? We don't know. Then how we can get the reply from ISP router? Branch one is sending hello packet to ISP, but ISP will not give the reply, right? So I don't want ISP as a neighbor. My neighbor is what? I need a branch one, branch two should be the neighbors. If ISP is the neighbor means, so ISP will maintain how many customer database information, guys? For ISP, how many customers are connected generally? Example, like a, a 50K customers are connected. If ISP is the neighbor means, what ISP will do? Oh, branch office one, you are my neighbor. So take my 50K neighbor's information. What, hap what happened to your branch office one router? We cannot maintain, right? So ISP router should not be your route, your neighbor. If you are making your, your ISP's neighbor means, so what ISP router will do? Okay, branch one, you are my neighbor, right? Then take share my information. So ISP router is a, maybe they are maintaining the 9000 series router, but your router is what? Basic router. Actually, we need the database information for other customers, not required. Then how branch one and branch office two should enable the neighbor relation? The thing is, branch office one and branch office two has to directly connect. Now we configure OSP of, we'll send hello packet to branch two. And we'll give the reply back, like this. This is only the possibility, right? So how is possibility? If branch office one is in a Hyderabad location, if branch two is in a US location, now both can be directly connected. Is it possible, guys? No. And how we can make branch one, branch two is a neighbor? So physically is not possible. And what I am doing is I am going to create one virtual uh, link from branch office one to branch office two i have created one virtual link so actually both are connected via serial interface right physical interface serial zero slash zero here maybe here also serial zero slash zero this is a physical connectivity but on top of the serial zero slash zero i am creating is a one virtual interface now in the branch office to serial zero slash zero port also on top of that has created one virtual interface. So now virtually branch one, branch two, both are directly connected. So physically is not possible, then what I'm doing is they are connected what? Virtually connected. So once you connect the virtual interfaces between the branch one, branch two routers, now branch office one router will fail. Yeah, branch office two router is directly connected to my branch office one router that is my neighbor so even the devices don't know about how they are connected right that is managed by configuration right if there is no virtual interface now what branch office one will do isp is my neighbor is sending hello packet to isp isp is going to drop the traffic We have to create between, like have a, if we take for some example of uh, SBI, like overall India wide, how many branches are there? Like all branches are physically connected via ISP. All branches are connected what? Via ISP, ISP to ISP, number of ISPs. 
but your head office and your branches are connected to via virtual interfaces. So actually, your traffic is crossing them between the number of ISPs, number of interface, internet routers. But once we configure virtual interfaces, now branch one, branch two will fail. Right. So creating virtual interfaces. Nothing but so we have created one tunnel between branch one interface and branch two interface. In branch one serial zero slash zero port, on top of that I have created tunnel interface. Even uh, branch to serial interface, tunnel interface one or two, like T one line, tunnel interface. So tunnel interface is nothing but what what does virtual interface. Okay, now we have configured OSP of they are exchanging hello package. Now branch one, branch two are neighbor form like extract, exchange, loading, full set, everything is okay. Now let's see communication. How the communication happen? Branch office one data traffic is being started. Now trial come to fast Ethernet, fast Ethernet to serial interface, serial interface to ISP, ISP to internet router, internet router to one more ISP, one more ISP to what? Branch office two. So means your traffic is going by ISP, ISP to internet. Internet is a public network, right? Public network, who is connected to public network? Like all attackers, hackers are being connected to public network, so they are waiting for you, right? So, what branch one branch two are exchanging? What is the database are exchanging? What is the passwords are exchanging? All the information has been there, keep monitoring. So, your data how to secure now? How to secure your data? We configure password to open the data packet. If you configure password, so what attackers will do? Will try to break your password. So your data should what encryption for me? Encryption. So once your data has been encrypted, if data has been encrypted, right now. Branch office one LAN users and two LAN users securely they can communicate now. Your data is encrypted now. Already your data has been protected. Passwords are configured and data has been encrypted. Now branch one and branch two securely they can communicate as yes or no. Once they are securely communicating means we can say this is this type of network private network. Finally, branch one LAN users, branch two LAN users, how they are communicating, how the guys they are communicating means exactly. Of network they are communicating now. Virtual private network. What is virtual? Tunnels. Nothing but virtual. What is private network? Data is encrypted. 
So VPN means combination of tunnel and encryption. So this VPN required for what type of connectivity for broadband users. Now branch one, branch two, we are connecting via what? Broadband, right? So why? Because we are discussed here, like laser lines is a secure, but thing is what? Laser lines are high expensive. Then we go for what? Broadband. If it's the broadband now, no security. To provide the security, we have configured what, guys? VPN. But my question is here, if branch of is one branch of two between you have a laser line connection VPN is required yes guys tell me why why laser lines are not required uh, why VPN is not required laser line itself is already secure right no other customers are connected but if it's a broadband for internet via number of customers are connected. So other customers can be monitored. For laser lines, no other customer is already secured. But still we use even laser line also. We can configure what? VPN. You know why? So why because so how laser line is connected now? Tell me guys. So laser line is connected to R1 router. To max, max to optical fiber cable, optical fiber cable to again uh, max and max to local router modems like R2 router. So this completely max optical fiber cable is maintained by whom? Is maintained by telco department, right? Here, no other customers are not connected, secured. Okay, but thing is, so we can trust the organization, this telco department. Can you trust guys who is working inside the telco department? Can you trust that person? We can trust for the organization. We can trust of the who is working on inside the no. Is your normal? Uh, you are sharing a normal data. If data is a normal type of data, then no problem, no issues. But maybe you are sharing is a confidential data like police department, army department, like some like confidentiality is maintained. And even for laser line also, on top of laser, laser line is already secure. On top of that, we use configure what? Yeah. VPN is a mandatory. VPN is a must for any type of network even your broadband services even your when uh, like a laser line services also we record what guys vpn okay <clears throat> in a single point what is vpn vpn stands for virtual private network okay but what is the technical point is now branch office one LAN users, branch office two LAN users are communicating on public network or private network. If, we, if VPN is not configured, we are communicating via public network, right? But now we have created one virtual interfaces between uh, branch one, branch two. On top of that, your data has been encrypted. So we have created a private communication channel over the public network. Public network we are connected on top of the public network. We have created one private communication channel, right? So this is we call VPN. VPN is a private communication channel over a public network. So all companies, all IT companies, and all government sectors and private sectors are connected to public network, but every company is on top of public network, so they are created the private. Link private network with this VPN. Like all the banking sector, like all banking sector connected to via internet, public network. But on top of that, they are created some tunnels between all the branches, and the data is also what very high secure. 
What is the point about VPN? It provides a private communication channel over your public network, provides security, point to point connectivity, even the scalable domains. So, this VPN can support for a small, medium, large enterprise, like any type of network can be supported. What is the VPN features? Data confidentiality, authentication, data integrity, and anti Four points. Point number one data confidentiality. Point number two is what authentication means. We can protect fast host for your data, right? Privacy. Data privacy means your data is being encrypted. What are the chances for attackers? What they do generally, attacker will discuss now. Now, let's consider traffic from branch 1 to branch 2 has been going. The traffic from branch 1 to ISP, ISP to internet. So, here we have hacker is there. What hacker will do? He capture data traffic. But now your traffic is coming from what we have configured what here? VPN, right? So means your data is support for authentication password you already password protected so what hacker is doing is is try to break the password so once password is being break like now they can open to data packet right okay open the data packet but vpn also can support for what confidentiality privacy means your data has been what encrypted data encrypted so two points here so hacker is trying to open the packet, but your data is a password protected. If a hacker is being password break, now he trying to open the data, the data is also what encrypted. Then what hacker will do guys now? We'll stop hacking. No. So what hackers are doing is, so no problem user, your data is being encrypted, right? No problem. I will do, I will decrypt. He will try to decrypt, right? So he also he knows a very good technology, right? He is a part of a very good technology. So some different different applications they have, right? So by using some algorithms, they are trying to decrypt your data. But thing is, your VPN can support for what data integrity. 
data integrity means modification. We cannot do modification. So once data has been captured, if we do any modification, now if we send to branch office two, what branch office two is doing is I won't accept it. Data has been some modification is done, then I do, I can't trust this packet. I'm going to drop it. Amazon, like uh, you have purchased one product and delivery is came, and if you open the parcel, you are like a your order is already uh, sealed, you're open, your package has been opened. Can you trust the packet now? All no, right, we'll return it. Why? So, something is been maybe say he's adding some amount, uh, maybe some addings, right? Maybe he's removed, whatever we don't know exactly. Same thing like when network traffic is coming from the branch one, if data is being modified, then your branch office is not going to accept that they are fake. Why? Because so you've done some modifications, I can't trust you. Is going to drop it. Even attacker is trying to uh, do the decryption, your data will not support. Why? Because we think can support for Data integrity cannot modify it. Three layer protected now. One is uh, what? Password. Keep break. So open the data. Data encrypted. He trying to decrypt the data. Data de data decryption is not possible. Then what attacker will do finally? Now what attack is doing is that is a very high intelligent guys doing is they're not going to break the password, they're not going to decrypt the data, they're not going to open the data packet also. Nothing. When traffic is going via public network to branch office too, now what attacker is doing is your data traffic is being captured. One packet is being captured here. Now what attack is doing is they will create one network over public network. This router name is branch office one, and this router IP address is whatever IP address you are using here. If you're using 10.0.0.1, then he will also use what 10.0.0.1. That's cloning your network actually. What is the network design here? So using OSP of maybe he is also what OSP of. So now this data which is Actually, your original data packet has been captured. Now, attacker is sending to do branch two. Hello, branch two. I am your original. I am your source. Now, what branch will do? Now, branch of is two. Now, attacker want to open the data packet. Now, attacker request the password. Now, attacker he have to decrypt the information. Nothing. He just captured and he cloning the network and he's initiating the traffic. Now, what branch will do? Branch of is two will do. Will give the reply to attacker. So once that reply is been now uh, to open that password is not required, just open the traffic, they can come to know and take the information clearly. So this is very good chance for attackers to get the information. But your data is already protected with what VPN. So what type of feature VPN can support means what guys? Anti-replay. What branch two is doing is so already have the receive the data here. Then why again you are sending? So repeated sending means you are you are not a trusted. You are not a trust information. I'm not going to trust this. I don't give the reply to you. This is the problem. So this is how VPNs are provide very high security. So just I'm explaining the basic uh, VPN connections only. Like once if we go for uh, cyber security professional level classes. We can get more and more details information about the VPN configuration and uh, uh, scenarios. Just the basic information in our CCN symbols and I'm explaining clearly about it. Three types of VPN generic routing encapsulation, GRE, IPsec VPN, SSL VPN, 
DM VPN, dynamic multi point. Explain how to create the virtual machine. Yeah, we use the real time this interface. So Cisco uh, initially they have developed one protocol called PR. Generic routing encapsulation, GRE VPN. So this GRE VPN can support to create only tunnels, only virtual interfaces between the branch and point to point. 1.2 and the point. Point to point tunnels between branch 1 uh, serial 0 slash 0 T12 branch of these two tunnels. Tunnel, only tunnel. The thing is, here you don't have the mechanism to encrypt the data. No encryption. So, after some time again, uh, we have one open standard protocol which is being developed like a it is uh, DM. Dynamic multi point VPN, DM VPN. So, this VPN also can support to create only tunnels without any encryption. No encryption. So, this can support 1.2 multi point. At point number 1, 2, number of points you can create the tunnels. Dynamic VPN, right? Which is the best guys, GRE or dynamic VPN? Which one is the best? Like both protocols does not support for what? Security, right? When DVM, DM VPN also, no encryption, no security. In the real time, we use one more type of VPN, which is a uh, IPsec VPN, Internet Protocol Security. So this protocol, this VPN can support to create uh, tunnels and a strong encryption algorithm. Point to point only. In the real time, we use more. DM VPN and point to uh, IPsec VPN. IPsec VPN can support for encryption and DM VPN can support for point to multi point. Combination of two IPsec VPN over DM VPN. IPsec over DM VPN, both combinations. Now, a DM VPN point to multi point, IPsec encryption. Okay. Now, syllabus we have the GRE. 
personally developed by Cisco. However, uh, GRE provides only tunneling without any entry. To enable communication between branch 1 and branch 2, in our example, we have configured OESP of protocol, right? But GRE protocol recommends between branch 1 and branch 2 configure static routing. GRE telling is what? So between your branches, don't configure. Uh, Recommended is what? Static routing using. Now we can configure dynamic routing also, no issues. But GRS recommends what? Static route. So static route should be configured towards remote LAN network via tunnel. Okay, so this Interface and a number can use any number IP address. Your you have to assign some IP address, how it IP address and a source interface, either interface and a destination, destination IP. Let me configure between the VPN between the branch and branch. Mm 
interface. configure generally channel the wait channel Channel number one, the channel has been activated. The base channel one, change state to R. Actually, before I'm using a branch one model number version 12.2 iOS version now. But just now, our configured channel that is 15.1 iOS. Channel interface one. IP address. IP address. Sample eleven dot two dot three dot four. Submit mark. Five five two five dot zero. Now tunnel source interface. Where we are created tunnel. Tunnel source interface. Via serial zero slash zero happen. Interface zero slash zero is not connected. I'm telling the example here. So for this router, there is no cable is connected. We need to connect the cable actually. Even I didn't assign the serial interfaces are not assigned. You try to practice. Thing, same thing. No, we need to assign some IP address. IP address here we need to configure some private IP. Can use any class A, class B, class any IP. Sorry. IP address for terminal that we are that what we are you had you had decided you can use any IP address. We are hiding, okay. So, your serial zero slash zero you have an IP address fifty one one one, which is provided by ISP, right? It is actually your public IP address. But on top of that serial interface, we are created tunnel one, right? So for tunnel one, what we are doing is have configured IP address is a eleven dot two dot three dot four some IP address. Now inside your packet source IP something fifty one 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 and destination IP is a your destination outer router IP address something IP address so this is your original packet right 
but on top of that vpn again they have tunnel ip is what 11.2.3.4 so this packet is going to internet one so what public users can say okay ip ip address is 11.2.3 this is the ip address but this is the ip address actual ip address is this it's just a, a duplicate address right but inside that you have the source actual ip address so your source 511 your actual public ip is being hidden hidden right Eleven two three. You can use any IP. So VPN are two methods. Like we can implement the majorly two methods. One is a IP side VPN. One more is a remote access VPN. Side to side and remote access. What is the difference? Side to side VPN and uh, remote access VPN, how it works. Uh, understand this scenario clearly. This is head office router, branch one and branch two. How to connect the three router? What technology we need to use? We have to use a broadband connection, or we have to use a laser line connection, which is a way. Laser line. Use a laser line is a secure, right? Head office, branch one, branch. Like compared to laser line, uh, compared to like a broadband, laser line high expensive. So your your office, it depends upon your office. Your office, your sharing is a like very a uh, data confidentiality. I mean the data information is very confidentiality. Then you can go with what? Laser line in normal office, but still you require if you require a uh, security, then use broadband on top of that to configure VPN. But ID companies are using is what they use laser lines. At the same time, you can what VPN also. Let me take you with laser line connectivity. Branch one and head office both are connected via laser line. From serial zero slash zero. To head office serial zero slash branch two serial zero slash zero here zero slash uh, one that. Now branch one LAN users and uh, branch two LAN users and head office LAN. In head office LAN, you have uh, some devices user one, user two, user three, and I have an office server. Maintain my company details are being here. How branch one branch head office connected via laser line, right? Means in between we have uh, Max optical fiber cable here, also Max optical fiber cable. So now, can you say like our network is a completely secure? Can you say it, our network is completely secure now? No, so secure, guys. Our network is now. It is secure. So you are taking the laser line, okay? But thing is, what we can trust the organization. We can't trust is working inside the organization, right? So we need to configure 
VPN even have the laser line connectivity. Okay, guys. So now I have configured VPN in branch one router, VPN in head office router, VPN in branch two router. Now LAN users and head office LAN users, they can communicate now secure or not. Now secure. Why? Because the both sides have configured what? VPN is configured. So when our data traffic is come to serial, so VPN is going to do what guys? Data confidentiality, data authentication method, data integrity, anti-replay, now high secure. Security is available. This type of uh, VPN we call the site to site VPN. Here, all office employees will compare organization. So, from organization, from organization router, they are connected to head office server, right? Secure communication. Why? Because here, all branch routers are configured with VPN, no problem, no issue. So, this type of uh, VPN we call Side to side, one side to another side, VPN is connected. Thing is, now one of the employee in my uh, work from home. Work from home. At home, so do you have a organization routers? No. Like how we can get a uh, internet from the homes? Your local service provider connected to your home. Your local service provider to public network internet internet to your head office router head office router to you are trying to hit a server now traffic is coming from your normal service provider right like what service doing is sorry i don't give the reply to you why because your traffic is not secure i can't trust your traffic Traffic is not coming from your branch offices. Your traffic is coming from normal service provider. I can't trust it. The traffic is coming via internet. I can't trust it. It's going to do the reply. Then how employee can do work from home? This is from your laptop. Even your PC is connected to local ISP. In your laptop, you need to install VPN. Client application. If you install the local VPN client application and uh, your VPN server is here, what are the authentication method? What is the information? What is the IP address here? So that information will provide to you in your VPN client application. So via VPN client application, you are connected to local ISP, your public network. Now, if you connect it to server, so what server can understand means now this PC is not in the home. Now this computer in my organization only. Don't give the reply. Okay. So this is what we have. We call it is a remote access VPN. Remote access, remote location. We want to access anything. We require VPN client application. At present, all the IT companies are doing the work from home, right? So how they are connected to uh, organization servers? VPN link client application. Okay, for IT companies to access the IT company servers, we have the VPN client applications. What about our personal use? Okay, smartphones. So daily we used to uh, utilize the internet, right? Like uh, you can log into Facebook, and uh, we can purchase online, like online payments and banking. The personal usage, we are connected to via what? Internet only. So means once you enter a Facebook password, in the middle, someone has been monitoring to you. Like when you purchase any something order, like in the middle, someone is going to hack you. Like your net banking, so between, someone is going to hack you, right? Then how, what about your personal phone? So for organizations, we have what? Remote law, remote access VPN and side to side VPN is already configured. Okay, safe and secure. What about now for your personal uses? Yes, 
still in your mobiles also vpn is running so which vpn is this like from your play store or uh, from anywhere if you open your web browser google chrome or any web browser so by default is all uh, authorized web browsers are being configured with uh, vpn application vpn certificates so that vpn is a ssl vpn so for your smartphones like a vpn client application is not required because ssl vpn is already in We are showing the HTTP. Yes. This web browser is being enabled already. Right. Your connection to server is encrypted. This server HDFC Bank server. This is the view certificate. And uh, and information. And, uh, Public key or is the algorithm using? This is the key is being generated. Algorithm is using here. English algorithm, Newton hash algorithm. So this is the public key is being generated. The attacker required uh, resolve the combinations to decrypt this. Every, every applications are like your mobile applications, like every browser is configured with uh, SSL VPN. Once if you go to uh, read some information, you can get some information. The mobile application also have you seen it. VPN information, site to site VPN and uh, remote access VPN. Verification command show interface tunnel. And tunnel number one, up to so the number has been found.
Lassen? An dem Modell? How we have secured the router and how we have gone to secure the switch and security between the branch one to branch two also. It is all parameters we need to keep in mind when you are very intense. And the centralized authentication method and next class uh, tomorrow will continue on the Monday with the troubleshooting also. We have one four sessions in one. No problem. A very good time, and we'll continue some more tomorrow. Okay, guys. Right. I'm going to end the meeting now.